Welcome to the High Value Sales Show of Eversprint.com. I'm Malcolm Louie, the managing member of Eversprint, and today we're speaking with Shay Berman, the president of Digital Resource, a full-service digital marketing agency based in West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome to the call today, Shay. Thank you for having me on. Shay, you grew your company's revenue from $102,000 in 2014 to $2 million in 2017, a 1,855% increase and now you're on track to hit $4.25 million in 2018. But before I ask you how you grew your company so fast, can you briefly share what your company does beyond my quick intro and how your company differs from the competition? Yeah, for sure. Our company, we're a digital marketing agency. We're a marketing agency that specializes in using digital marketing to bring our clients new business. Typically, our clients have goals revolving around new revenue growth, you know, bringing in specific types of business to certain services they offer, or bringing in a certain number, uh, in some cases like patients, for example, or a certain number of clients to the door. We assist our clients in growing their businesses, utilizing these online channels. So a lot of companies try and figure out what they can do online and then figure out what that's going to bring them in terms of business success. We go the opposite way. We define their business goals and utilize online marketing to achieve those goals based on what we know about the marketing landscape, the demographics of their area, and what it's going to take to bring them new business using different verticals online. Um, one way that our clients say we're a lot different from our competition is because of how we set up our campaigns, because we are more of a consultative approach where we learn more about the business before we bring in the marketing. Another reason why our clients say that we're different is because of our tracking abilities. Um, not just our abilities, but our obsessiveness with wanting to track our results. We work with our clients on a partnership level. We're not a vendor, but a partner to them. And we work with them to figure out what is and is not working in their marketing. And because we create that partnership and because we care and we are on the same level as our clients, and we're invested in their success, it creates a great dynamic from the client to the agency and allows our clients to be transparent and upfront with us as well as us to be transparent up front with our clients, creating great communication and overall great marketing and success for whatever their goals may be. Oh, fantastic. Now, the key points of differentiation you shared with me, are they also the, the biggest drivers of your sales growth over the past few years, or is there something else that drove your sales growth? You know, a lot of things drove our sales growth. I can't say I can attribute to just one or few or just these key differentiators. And I think it really starts with the fact that we are passionate about what we do, but not in the word, loosely worded word, terms that people use passion all the time. We really want to be one of the top, largest, and fastest growing companies in the country that provide the best results. And because of it, I don't sleep. I, when, I do, when I do sleep, I'm thinking about my company. And when I'm always living and breathing digital resource, and so is our team. Our team is obsessed with being the best at no matter what their role is in the company. And that translates into everything, into the partnerships we build, into referrals we get from our clients, to the clients our, our people bring in from their friends and family. We're all so obsessed with being the best and being the biggest and being the fastest that everyone plays a role in touching everywhere. And it opens up a lot of doors for opportunities like interviews, like seminars, like speaking events, like a lot of engagements that we wouldn't typically get had we not been obsessed with the business that allows us to get in front of more and more people than the average marketing agency. Okay. So uh, obsess, obsession with being the best, being the fastest, uh, were there other drivers that you would attribute, maybe the number two driver of your sales growth? I think back to kind of our unique selling points, um, I think that our obsession with also tracking what we do has led to long-term results for our clients to where our clients don't leave us. We have a very low attrition rate compared to the industry average when it comes to digital marketing. Um, and we do month-to-month -month contracts. So we are actually able to bring on more clients than most agencies would because we're able to have that trust factor where, hey, we're losing if we don't keep you long-term. And we're willing to commit to that to you by bringing you on a month-to-month -month basis, knowing that we're not going to be profitable to at least three to six months down the line. So we bring in more through the doors because of that. We keep them longer because we prove our results. And again, our team is really great at managing our clients throughout the sales process and throughout the post-sell, which is essentially the marketing campaign. All right. So your team is fantastic both uh, before, during, and after the sale. Um, and, that, and that comes with your obsession with tracking as well. Is there a 
third factor that you'd like to add to the list as being a big sales growth driver? You know, I mentioned the first one just being our passion obsession. Um, but I think a big piece of it really comes down to hard work. A lot of people say you work smarter, not harder, but you can work smarter and you can work harder. And because I'm sleeping, um, or I should say I'm working 20 hours a day, at least six days a week, um, literally sleeping four hours a day, I am able to open up the door to so many opportunities for my company and trickle that down to my team. So the obsession with the work, you know, our teams follow through from beginning to end, but also just working harder. So many people want to just let it come to them and let the doors open, but we push those doors open and we push through them to the next door that's behind them. Fantastic. Now you grew your sales um, from 102,000 in 2014, and you're ending this year at about 4.25 million. Now, clearly that didn't all come from just doing more business with your clients, right? You must have added a tremendous number of new clients, or perhaps you didn't. Can you share how many new clients you've added over the past few years? Yeah, you know, I started the company only four years ago. When our first sales numbers from Inc. that were from 2015, that 102,000, that was my first year of business just by myself. Um, at that time, we had, I want to say maybe 15 clients. And today we have close to four, a little over 400. So over the last you know, three and a half years or so, we've gained about 400 clients or so. Okay. Now I, ha now I have from my research that you have 21 employees. Is that right? We actually now have, as of today, we have 39. 39 employees. Okay. Now, are you at capacity? Can you handle, can your 39 employees handle more than 400 or are you pretty much tapped out right now and you need to hire more people? So we are always hiring. We actually hire 1.89 people per month currently and we are always staffed to be able to handle our influx of new clients that come every single month as well as the clients that leave. Um, we have, uh, we know how many that difference is and we are always staffed up and ready for that. Our physical office is capped out at about 41 so we are almost at capacity from physical size. But in the middle of February, our new office opens. that will hold 101 people. So we're just kind of trying to hold over till then. We'll send some people home in the meantime if needed to work remote. Um, but we are always staffed up and ready for the influx of new clients that comes every single week. Okay. Um, so I did some simple math here. So you're looking to end the year at about $4 million. You have 400 clients today. So that works out to be annual revenue, about $10,000 per client. Is that about right on average? Yeah, that, that is about right. Okay. What are they getting for your uh, 10K per year service? So average? you have to remember, we have clients that are doing all the way down to website maintenance only with us, you know, just maintaining their website, a couple hundred bucks a month, all the way to clients who are investing, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 per month. So while that is our average, you know, those averages are, can fluctuate greatly. Um, okay. But our average client has us, uh, a website, website maintenance, search engine optimization, social media management, uh, and then typically has a little bit of Facebook advertising and our hottest offering, which is managed live chat services. All right, so managed live chat services. And how much do they typically uh, pay you for those typical services per month? Uh, it all ranges depending on the industry they're in and the competitiveness. Um, you know, live chat is... 375 per month on average for a local business and can go up from there. Social media is a few hundred dollars a month and can go up from there. Um, search engine optimization, you know, we're talking close to a thousand a month and can go up from there. Um, but that's kind of our, our general client has about those things. Okay. So is your uh, median value much different from the $10,000 per year average I calculated? Well, the $10,000 per year average is correct. That's an absolute average. Yeah, but you right. have to remember that we have so many clients that are below and above it that it's yep. hard to really give you an exact middle ground. Sure. Okay. Now, um, from 15 clients to 400, I mean, you literally added you know, 100 a year practically. Um, how did you guys find new clients at each and every year? There's really two sides of it. Um, one side is we have it all referral based uh, from our partners that you know work with business owners who refer us business because they know we'll do a great job for their own clients um, to our clients who we do a great job for that bring on other businesses and their friends and family. And then our other side is our search engine optimization. You know, we're very highly ranked in the United States and large major cities around the country. 
to where people are finding us online and requesting you know a free analysis or requesting for us to analyze their business and their marketing online so that we can determine whether or not they're going to be good for for us and them be, and us be a good fit for them right yeah i did a little bit of a research into what you're doing from a seo and pay per click uh, perspective and yeah uh, i saw some pretty heavy uh uh, SEO work that you've been doing, but nothing on the pay-per-click side. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. What's your thinking behind that? You know, pay-per-click uh, can drive some calls. They're typically people that don't have money from what I find. <laughs> Interesting. Um, okay. Th- yeah. That's the organic side. And same thing we tell our clients. The organic side is going to have less tire kickers, more serious buyers, people with more money. Um, that's what we see in organic. And I'm an SEO specialist at heart. That's what got my company started was my passion for SEO. Um, Google ads can do it. When it comes to internet marketing, but I just don't see it performing nearly as well, especially for the money you have to put in up front, number one. And uh, number two, you know, Facebook advertising is becoming huge, and there's a lot of opportunity there that, that we're actually working on for 2019. For yourself? Yeah. Okay. As well as your clients, but yes, for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of in the impression that to find clients on Facebook wasn't really optimal from a lead gen perspective because – you know, do businesses really hang out on Facebook looking for solutions to the problems? Unlike, say, uh, Google, right? When someone has a problem, they're going to type in something into the search bar, and and then you can you know show them the relevant ad. Uh, what's your take on using Facebook to generate business leads for yourself? You know, we have some of the most highly skilled Facebook advertising specialists in our company, and they have a great way at figuring out who the most broad and general business owner is and be able to show them and display them content that might be interested to them that triggers different pieces of the Facebook advertising funnel. As that person goes down the funnel, you're able to put them into certain groups and give them a buying persona that you can then advertise to. So through sharing certain pieces of content and seeing who it does and does not engage that content, you can go from a very general business owner because those business owners are online, just maybe not interested at the exact moment you hit them and get them interested and get them into a buying buyer persona group that you can advertise to and hit down the road. It's just a longer play and not necessarily direct call to action, but content feeding with a call to action at the end. Right. Now, when you show them ads, will you be, uh, are you keeping them all on the Facebook platform and you'll be showing them ads from within Facebook or are you going to be do, doing the uh, remarketing thing and hitting them on all fronts? Typically, you want to do it just in Facebook. Um, when we're doing the ad side, we do remarketing as far as ad roll um, with display advertising online. But when we do it in Facebook, we keep it in Facebook. Uh, the return on investments, the conversion rates are much higher within the Facebook platform, even you know, 10 times higher than Instagram. And obviously with their partner networks, it's much higher than those as well. Right. Okay. So in terms of your uh, plans for 2019 what can you share them i know you're talking about doing a little bit, little bit more facebook advertising to generate leads for your own business uh, in the upcoming year any other plans you can share with us yeah we're increasing our sales force um we have some major partnerships that are opening up our doors to opening up their doors to us excuse me and with that we need the staff to be able to handle the you know maintain those partnerships and keeping those doors open um, so on top of our own Facebook lead gen, we will be you know, furthering our partnerships that have gotten us here over the last four years. And um, we should be at a higher growth rate than ever for 2019. Okay. Can you share a little bit about your partnerships? Yeah. I mean, we are very specific in certain industries. And with these industries, we have people who have just entrusted us with their clients. And basically, they're just spreading us to more and more of their friends around the country. So it's not too much more particular than the fact that they trust us and they're going to make our, their friends trust us too. Okay. Can you uh, give an example of, of such a partnership, either a real one or a hypothetical one either way? Yeah. Um, so let's say that there is a, um, a medical supplier and there's a medical doctor. And he gets the supplies from this certain medical um, supplier. Those suppliers have reps, for example, that go out around the country and they walk to those doctor's offices every day. Well, sometimes conversations come up about marketing and how to get more patients. So that medical doctor will sometimes listen to that rep and bring in a company like us. So we really want to build those partnerships with those reps. Uh, okay, got it. And, and how will increasing sales on your side help with these sort of partnerships? So increasing sales on our side won't help with the partnerships, but 
basically when we do get the opportunities with these partner clients and we do a great job, it helps them because number one, it increases the size of their client themselves because they can sell more to them because they're doing more business. And number two, it makes them look good because they're the ones who referred us. So there's more trust. And then, you know, that kind of relationship with them and their clients, um, it's a lot about relationships. So they want to build on that relationship and bring us into the mix can solidify that. Okay. So your goal of hiring more salespeople is really to, uh, really to solidify the, re- the relationship and help that relationship grow quickly and fast so that everyone is a to, winner from that. Yeah. To be able to service those accounts that they're bringing to the table. Right. Yep. Now your, your team right now, you said you have a uh, 39 employees and you're growing by a uh, 1.89 each month, which is kind of funny. And, uh, um, are they all local to Florida, your team? They are. Everyone is in-house. Yeah. What's your thoughts about that, uh, having everyone in-house versus having them scattered throughout the nation, if not the world? I don't believe in remote. Um, I think remote can cause a lot of waste, number one, but the most important reason is it can diminish culture. I think that if you have everyone together in the same room, especially in a creative environment like we have, like our industry is – that it, it creates for a much better um, form of communication within the company and then back to the client as well. So I'm not a big believer in remote work, um, not at least on the creative aspect of marketing. Okay. Now, you quoted me a few price ranges for your services. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what goes into each of the elements that you shared with me, um, but they didn't sound outlandishly expensive relative to other offers out there. Am I correct, or are you saying that you, would you – put your pricing at mid tier, low tier, high tier? I say our pricing is somewhat low tier. Uh, it depends on the business that we're working with, not that our prices change, but the amount of work that goes into what they need changes. So I was kind of giving you like a local business um, type pricing. Obviously when we get to like mid- medium size or large businesses, it goes out from there, which is the why our clients can scale so widely. But another thing that makes our company unique is our ability to work with the mom and pop shop all the way up to the 57 franchise business we're working with every single location uh, or in obviously the entire corporate brand. So we work with everyone and we have teams for everyone within our company. Right. Okay. But, um, you know, what I'm trying to figure out now is that, you know, the, the, the common thinking is that uh, having local U.S.-based staffing costs is significantly higher than if you were to have a remote team that are in other parts of the world, right? But yet at the same time, your pricing doesn't seem – exorbitantly high so how do you make that work is it just a volume game for you is that the way you're looking to build your business make it up on the volume I've been, side i've been told that the way we create our processes have created created such drastic and amazing efficiencies um that we're able to keep our pricing so low um i say i've been told because when we talk to accountants when we talk to people who are evaluating our books they're also surprised by the efficiencies that we have in place. So we're just a very, very efficiently run company. Okay. Can you give an example of how that evolved? Uh, you know, example of an efficiency, inefficiency that you identified and how you uh, squashed it out of existence? Well, my favorite word in the world is economical. I believe that everything should be economical from what you do in your personal daily life to what you do in business, to how you drive, to how you eat, to how you dress, to how you walk, to how you talk, to how everything should be economical for the situation. So because I've been obsessed with that word, I brought that to the company in many different forms, from the tools that we use to how we evaluate our time to what, how we value our time and what kind of effort we put into it. So we are always evaluating our efficiencies from beginning to end. Um, a specific one I can give you um, within our company, um, you know, for example, running Google advertising, there's a lot of tools out there that you can purchase that can make it so one person can run more Google ads and can spot errors for you. But it's not just about using the tool, but how you use the tool, not allowing the tool to do all the work for you and make those manual changes, but letting the tool be a backdrop to the knowledge that you already have. So there's various different levels that you can use certain tools, but knowing where to le- level your efficiency into it, your economicalness, if you will, is very important. So you don't let, you know, automation take over to a point where it shouldn't be and you don't do too much work to the point where you are inefficient right exactly so for 2019 can you share your revenue targets for the year and maybe your client targets client targets i'm not sure um you know it's changed every year and it's not really something that we go by okay but i can tell you our two targets you go by which is revenue and people growth because i'm very proud of 
the growth of our company and the economic um, Im impact that we have locally here in West Palm Beach. Uh, we're hoping to go from 39 people to about 60, 55, 60. And um, we hope to go from 4.25 million. We should do about 7 million next year. Okay. Um, and do you have a feeling on how much of that's going to be coming from providing additional services to your clients so you're growing along with them versus actually finding new business? I would say 80% or so should come from new business. Okay. And will all that come from um, from your Facebook advertising campaigns that you're looking to do or, or, or some other channels that you're looking to get the new business and referrals, of I, course? I, I can definitely say it's going to be 50-50 on our referral sources and our SEO. Um, as far as how the Facebook advertising campaign does, that will uh, that's yet to be seen. So I don't have an estimate, but we have high hopes. Okay. Now, are you using any or have you tried other channels to uh, to generate new business? I know you said from your pay-per-click experience, not so fantastic. How about uh, email marketing direct to your ideal customers? Uh, have you tried that? And if yes, how did that work for you? We've never done anything else besides SEO and our partnerships. Okay. Do you see a need to do something else? Um, no, I think we've done one other thing. We have a great brand online from our website to our social media. Um, to We do email marketing, but it's all warm to our existing clients or well, leads that we've talked to in the past. Okay. We have a great brand that when you look at marketing agencies online, most agencies don't do for themselves what they tell other people to do for them. Yep. And yep. we definitely do. Our culture is lively there and all of our clients our partners our friends our family everyone who's ever touched or seen digital resource sees digital resource on facebook or instagram or anywhere else that we're posting in one way or another at least a few times a week it keeps us top of mind it keeps those referrals flowing it keeps the trust there and it keeps everyone knowing who we are and people get passionate about our own business to where i've been surprised to see the passion coming from people outside our own company um and people are knocking on our door every day to come working for us. Right. Now, how do you uh, manage your SEO so it, so it attracts your ideal clients and not you know, people who would never do business with you? So I really don't mind who it attracts because whether it's a student, which we get students on there all the time doing research because we talk to them through our chat, uh, or a business owner looking now or a business owner looking never. Um, we just want to grow our physical presence. Thinking of our SEO, our content being created as a news site, and if that turns into something more through a call to action that they see, wonderful. And if not, we'd love to support the traffic and provide them with the information we're creating. So we're just creating information that we believe is relevant to the world, putting sometimes an SEO spin on it, maybe some localized keywords, um, but really it's just about increasing the physical size for a website for content that's being searched. Right. Now, doesn't that kind of go a little bit uh, counter to your uh, economical philosophy, uh, you know, investing into SEO and attracting traffic that may not necessarily result in more business for yourself? You would think so, but it's about how I invest in that traffic. I don't actually have an SEO team for ourselves. When our team is overstaffed and there is not enough work to be had, our team all turns into SEOers and content creators. Therefore, I'm using the efficiency or the inefficiency of being overstaffed for the future outcomes of bringing in new clients to utilize that for our SEO, which is then creating an efficiency <laughs> right. and allowing us to do SEO for our own website. So we use our overstaffing problem as an opportunity to increase our SEO. Right. The, uh, the endless job, right? The infinite task when anyone has some excess capacity to themselves, they can work on your SEO and content development, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you don't have the uh, onus on them to create the content for any particular customer avatar you're, you're seeking to attract. Sounds like you're a bit pretty liberal on the kind of content you allow them to create. Yeah, we, sometimes we create some generalized plans, but it's, it's a fairly liberal process. Right, okay. Now, to, to what degree when you do SEO work, at least on the content side, that you create the content to attract a particular um, customer avatar, either not either for yourself or for the clients. Can you ask that again? Yeah, and so um, to what degree do you do SEO work in uh, content creation to attract a specific customer avatar? Because I know you share with me now, you're okay, uh, you know, 
attracting traffic who are not your ideal customers, right? Does that extend to your clients as well? Um, no, our clients are always going to be, well, let me back up because it's not like I'm not, it's not like I'm okay with bringing in traffic. That's not ideal to my customer avatar, but because we're in the business of marketing and marketing is a subject that's often studied, we always bring in people who are not necessarily looking for to work with us because of that, because marketing is studying, we're providing information. So same can be for our clients. If someone's studying whatever industry they're in and they're looking for information as well, but it doesn't mean they're not necessarily going to be purchasers. Obviously you have that segment, but it doesn't mean that they're not purchasers possibly in the future because they're still landing on that website. Right. Exactly. So what are challenges do you see that you're facing in 2019 that you need to still figure out in order to achieve your objectives? Biggest challenge for 2019 Really, it's just the physical limitations of our office space right now and getting through it. Okay, so you're going to be actively looking for a new space. Yeah, well, we have that space that's being built out. It'll be done mid-February. So right now, it's just holding over until then. Otherwise, we don't, we don't have a whole lot of limitations that we're looking at. Okay, so uh, you know, you're know you comfortable that you're going to be hitting your, your uh, sales targets, that you'll be able to hire the people you need to hire, and then in terms of the number of new clients coming on board. You know, you're not too focused on that, you said. Yeah, you know, we're definitely, we think that we're going to have our best sales year ever, so we're not really concerned with anything else behind it. Okay. And now, a number of uh, people I've interviewed talked about how it's really challenging for them to find uh, qualified people in, in our current full employment uh, macro situation. Are you finding that to be the case as well? So, I'm not. We are always actively recruiting. Um, internally, and we have some external recruiters we work with, and we also have a great internship program that we've had in the past. We've obviously run out of physical space now, but we're going to be doing a very intense internship program in our new space that will have about 10 interns at any given time, two per, two per position for the most part, because we have about five teams in our office, so we'll have two interns for every team that will always be rotating. So with the interns, the, the internal recruiting and the external recruiters we have, we always pretty much have someone available to bring onto the team. Okay, so uh, and are these people all locally, or are people willing to pack up their bags and move move to Florida? They're all local. All right, fantastic. You are. You sounds like you guys are the exception to the rule, or is this Florida <laughs> a really robust environment for finding people who can do digital marketing? You know, what? I mean, Florida's a more robust economy than most people think. Um, part of the reason why I'm here is because I believe it's the land of opportunity. Um, most businesses are small business owned. It's not too corporate. It's not too big business here. And the people that are here are creative people. And there's a lot of people who are looking for opportunities, but there's not businesses to support it. When you're looking at large agencies in the state of Florida, there's only a handful at most, if you want to consider them large. And when you're looking at agencies that are full of opportunity, we definitely stand out as one of the top uh, because of our culture, because of our speed of growth, and because of where we want to head to. And you know, what I do believe to be my leadership and the leadership of my, the team that's below me. Um, so we are a very attractive place for anyone in the marketing space within, you know, 100 miles of here. Right. Now, you mentioned earlier that you have uh, 400 clients. Um, you know, how many buckets are there if you were to group them together of those 400? What do you mean? Well, they're all not. Clearly, they're not all the same, right? They're all different in some ways. So how would you segment your 400 clients? I would say 40% medical practices and 60% literally everyone else. Okay. And um, how about size of company? How would you uh, slice and dice that, them up on that uh, factor? That ranges too because so many companies you know, do or don't need human capital to run. Um, are you talking about size in terms of number of people, revenue? Um, whatever metric is uh, relevant to your client base. I would say people. I'd say the average size of a client is maybe 10 to 15 people in the company. Okay. That's uh, smaller than I had anticipated, especially since you said you had some that are paying you tens of thousands a month for, for your work. Well, you asked, you asked for the average, though. Yeah, true, true. Okay, good. And um, uh, how about the revenue range of your 400 clients? Yeah, but how wide does it go? I, I honestly wouldn't know that exactly. I would say maybe one to two million a year. 
Okay. Now, surely the ones who are spending, uh, you know, six digits with you every year are, are well beyond the two million range. Of course. Yeah. Okay. All right, and that kind of brings me to my uh, last two questions I have for you. Um, you know, who are your ideal clients, and what's the best way for them to reach you? Our ideal clients are anyone who believes that the internet might be a place to obtain new business, and of course, anyone who wants to grow their business. Um, you can reach us at our website, yourdigitalresource.com, and also email us at sales at yourdigitalresource.com. So if you're looking to grow your business and you believe that online might be the right place and you have goals that you want to achieve, um, that's definitely an ideal client for us. All right, fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me today, Shay, and sharing how you grew your company so fast. Yo, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the time today. We've been speaking with Shay Berman, the president of Digital Resource, about his company's rapid growth. For interviews with other fast-growing, high-value sales companies, or to learn how we can accelerate your firm's high-value sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.